Hi friends, Teresa Louise here. Welcome to my channel. We're going to start a new project today. Today is Sunday the 20th. And yeah, time to start a new project. Why not? <laughs> right? Might, might as well add to those UFOs. So let's see who we got here. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Hi Sue, how are you doing? Or good afternoon to you. How's everything going? I'm just still trying to get everything a little set up here. And Hi Laura. Hi June. Hi Linda. Hi Brenda. I'm trying to find the patterns that I just saved. And, huh, that's weird. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, I'm in the wrong folder. <laughs> My brain. Hello, Terry. Hi, Heather. Hi, Colleen. Hello Susan. Hi Robin. Hello BJ. Hi Cheryl. Hi Shirley. <laughs> yeah, I guess I created I'm I have my laptop over here if you're wondering what I'm doing. Brought my laptop up and um because I still haven't ordered any ink <laughs> for my printer. What is my problem? Hi, Mary Ann. Um, I need to do that. Then I can print off these patterns. But I, um, since I didn't do that, I just downloaded the uh, patterns to my laptop. So I brought my laptop up here. So I don't know if you can hear that, the fan going. Hopefully it's not too noisy. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Kim. How are you doing today? How are you, June? Well, we got about... Woke up to about oh, four or five inches of snow this morning. And then it's kind of been snowing off and on today. But um, <laughs> my husband and I decided to wait till this afternoon and um, see how much snow we get. We're hoping that it warms up and it melts so that we don't have to go plow. <laughs> don't really want to go plow. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Patricia. Um, no, I didn't watch that. Rick Toms. Does he have a YouTube channel? Um, hi, did I say hi to Sandra? I might be saying hi again. Things go in and out of this brain. <laughs> I forget quickly. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry about that. You're tired? Yeah. I was feeling pretty good earlier and now I just feel totally exhausted. Um, oh, okay. Ricky Timms. Oh, I know who that is. Okay. Showed how to clean your design boards with freezer paper. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I'll have to go watch that. Um, hi, Shelly. Hi, Kay. Yes, no is a four-letter word.
Okay. Yeah, it's just a little fan that's in the laptop. And um, I could try and move my microphone. That might help if it gets to be bothersome. It seems like it's it's a super old laptop and it seems like the fan blows constantly and I always have to set the laptop up on something so that it has air flowing you know otherwise it just gets really hot. Oh my goodness Heather's cutting her boy's hair. That's not fun. <laughs> it is a uh, first day of spring too, so happy spring day. Yesterday, yesterday was quilt day. Today's spring day. Um, but we got snow, so. <laughs> March snow brings June flowers. <laughs> That's how it is up here. Hi to Linda, how are you today? Oh, that's nice. Susan is just finished up a table runner this morning and now she's working on a um, churn dash blocks for a baby quilt. Oh, wow. Kim, Kim had company this weekend and the kids just left, so she took a nap but she's still tired. Oh, I don't blame you. <laughs> Melissa says it's her 37th anniversary of marrying her ex. I'm not sure what the temperature is out there. I know it's it gets hard to keep up with the chat I know okay my back is kind of got to straddle this chair <laughs> pardon me oh, that might help a little bit my back's starting to hurt hi Carrie how are you today hello Nancy Just iron your freezer paper, it comes right off. Are you talking about like the getting the um, threads off of your design board? Because uh, free per freezer paper has wax on it, so it, maybe it lifts the lint and stuff like that. Is that what you're talking about? Hi Remo, how are you doing? Hi Don, hi Nancy L. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and say last names. Don is uh, listening while she's working on her strawberry blossom. Oh, I bet that's nice. see. Oh, I'm down at the bottom. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Quilt Tessa. You're catching alive. Yay. Hi, Patty. She just got up from a nap, too. All right, you guys. Let's stop talking about these naps, because I could, I could use a nap. Okay, Susan, that's all right. Hi, Lori. Mm. 
Yeah, I think um, like over in the UK, you guys seem to get a lot of rain. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of when I lived up by Seattle, you know, all that rain. I, lo I loved all the green, but you can keep that everyday rain. I'm using my new mug warmer. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know who you are. And it is keeping my tea much warmer, which is awesome. Yeah, I know. No, well, I'm, um, what I'm talking about, I'm talking to Pat Patricia said that you use freezer paper on your design board. So I'm trying to ask her uh, if it lifts the thread off. Plastic coating. Okay, well, it's waxy. One thing for sure is you will always get corrected on YouTube. <laughs> Ironing freezer paper also helps clean your iron. Okay, Patricia says yes, it does. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to try that because does it take hair off too, like dog hair? Because <laughs> that, that is actually a blanket that's, you know, like a fleece or, not fleece, I don't know what it is, but um, it, it kind of has the texture of batting, sort of, but it is very sticky, but everything sticks to it, so... And you know I let my dog in here, so when she walks by, it gets dog hair on it. <laughs> the dog hair just flies off. And, you know. <laughs> yep, always get corrected. But that's alright. Uh, felt, yes, it's like felt. It's one of those really, uh, I don't know if you can even buy those kind of blankets anymore. The, this one, design board is uh, batting. Um, and thread does stick on it. But not as bad as that does. Hi, Emily. So, yeah, I would say it, it is like felt. I was looking for the tag, but um, I cut it off, <laughs> so so it would fit there. So it's not as long as it was. Just try it in the corner. Okay. Hi, Judy. Yeah, we shed a lot too, so. Our hair goes all over the place. Okay. So I'm drinking water and tea. <laughs> See how good I am today? I want to start a new quilt. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> but I've been talking about this quilt for a while. And originally I said that I was going to use my scraps, but I changed my mind. So I want to start the uh, Be My Neighbor quilt that Pat Sloan is doing over on her channel. I talked about it before. Um, 
so I thought I would just get started and I'm, I'm not in any big hurry to get it all done I'm gonna like in one day one video I'm, I'm not gonna do that this may take uh, quite a few videos but I'm thinking maybe once a month maybe twice a month I'll do the live with this um, project if you guys want to um, do it with me that would be great I'm not sure what week she's on week two or three but I did go over you can find the patterns on her blog um, website Pat Sloan and it's called Be My Neighbor and it's different houses and stuff you know barns and trees and there's a little bit of applique and um, so hi James um, drive safe so the other thing I like about it is it's a free pattern actually was a Moda pattern that was free that Moda put out a few years ago um, and I believe Pat started it before she had her accident where she broke both her wrists oh my god I don't know how she did it with two broken wrists um, and luckily she had her husband helping her a lot <laughs> uh, except for the sewing I don't know if he did any of that but anyway, so it's a free pattern. So I don't know if it's still on the Moda website. I didn't check that. But I did check over on Pat Sloan. And um, it takes a little bit navigating through <laughs> her website. But just be patient and uh, you'll find it. And then, I, like I said, I just downloaded it onto my laptop. And at some point... Um, I might print it out if I ever get any ink. Um, usually when I print out patterns, I just print out the worksheets. You know, I don't print out all of it. Like uh, most of those are like eight pages and you don't really need to have all of those printed out. Um, so anyway, you should go check that out um, if you haven't seen it yet and you want to join me the first thing you definitely want to um, get is the instruction page it tells you how much fabric you're going to need and all that stuff so let's see if I can bring it back up Um, be sure if you have a question for me to either do a question mark um, and then your question so I see it or maybe you write it out in caps so I see it um, or you can do the at, at sign with my whole name it has to be the whole whole name all the way <laughs> hi Beverly hi Tammy all right um so yesterday on the live i showed you some fabric that i got from so yeah it was a surprise <laughs> mystery package and um i decided why not i'm going to try and use that uh, fabric that i got because the fabric i got uh, the panel is very farmy <laughs> you know it's got barns and horses and animals on it so if you weren't here yesterday let me show it to you oops you're you're standing on it <laughs> sorry about that um so this is the panel very old-fashioned and um, in looking at it, the colors kind of remind me of Americana, you know, um, like these colors here, very old fashioned colors in these blocks.
and those are red, white, and blue. And originally, I was thinking of doing this quilt in red, white, and blue. Although, um, there are trees in the pattern, so I'm not going to do those in red, white, and blue. I'll do those in green, green, and green. <laughs> but, something that matches. Okay, so I think I've kind of felt like this would do a couple of different things. Pulling out our fabrics and, um, you know, shopping our own stash using what we have. Plus, it's a free pattern. And so it will use up some of our fabric, <laughs> which is a good thing for me anyway. Um, I know some of you, very few of you, only buy um, your fabric as you go, which amazes me, but I think it's awesome. If I didn't have very much room, I'd probably do that too. Like in my old house. I didn't have much room at all, so I really had to be careful. Anyway, so I thought uh, I had a lot of questions on yesterday on how to use a panel, so I feel like I can show you how I would use this panel with that pattern, um, with Be My Neighbor pattern, and how I would incorporate these different squares into that. Now, what I could do is um, re reduce the amount of blocks um, that I would have to make for this pattern, or I could still make the same amount of blocks and then add these in there somewhere within the quilt. So th it'll be very interesting to see. Um, this quilt is 68 by 84, and that's a pretty nice size. So, maybe, maybe I will, you know, reduce the amount of blocks I have to do, and then just use some of the uh, blocks that are in the panel, okay? Now, <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> Wait, what? We can buy fabric as we need it? I know. We could do that. <laughs> I'd never buy fabric if I did that because I hardly ever go to town. <laughs> Love the barn with the cow. Yeah. So, um, check out that pattern um, on Pat Sloan's website. And you'll see it's very Americana type pattern. It's got barns houses, trees, um, bird houses. So I feel like this panel would go very well with that pattern. Okay, so there's that. Yep, Pat Sloan, Be My Neighbor. So, of course I get uh, fabric delivered every now and then, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Colleen. You can make your own design, Crystal. Yeah. I don't think I would go to New York <laughs> City to get fabric. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to drive in there. I'd, <laughs> I'd have to take a taxi or a friend. All right, Susan. <laughs> That's right. Patty says, I don't have stash. I'm stockpiling it for a rainy day. Yeah, thrift stores are a great way to buy fabric. A friend of mine and I went um, to the thrift store, well, I think it's been about a year or two now, and um, we got two great big boxes of fabric. 
and um, we took it to where we quilt together and down here in town and cut it all up and made baby quilts out of it for donation. It was great. Now the one thing I will have to do is, I'll probably have to do is um, these blocks in the panel are very small, uh, maybe five and a half, I'd have to measure it. So I will have to make these bigger somehow, either add um, sashing around them, because the blocks in here are pretty big in the pattern, um, but that's all part of the joy, and I think it's a lot of fun trying to figure out how to incorporate your panel into a pattern that already exists, right? So it'll be a lot of fun, I think. Um, they are... five and three quarters. So I'll have to figure out how to add how I want to add to those. And then of course the one in the middle is really big. So the next thing I did, so we'll move on from that. As you can see this panel has all different kinds of colors in it. Especially this So I take this panel, plus the other fabric I got with this panel, is this one. Um, this is a really good uh, piece of fabric to use as your primary source to draw in other colors. Okay. Even if you end up not using this, uh, it'll, if you still, you can use it to draw your colors out of your stash and then set this aside and it's all those colors you picked are still going to go with your panel. Okay, so you can do it kind of both ways with the panel and if you have another piece of fabric like that. So I'm going to point this down so you can see what I'm doing. So I went over to my stat, my sat, stash, <laughs> if I can't talk, I'm sorry, having a bad talking day. And I'll just set that there. So I have this col these colors in here, um, these chickens up here, these dark reds, these are very dark, deep colors. <clears throat> so, the other fabric I got yesterday were these milk cans and the farmer fabric. So I'm going to use these two maybe somewhere. These are my possibilities. Um, the quilt panel does have black and white cows in it. Right here. And the black is really similar. Plus there's black on the tires and stuff like that. Okay. So these two are definitely possibilities. Then Pat is doing her barns and houses and all that with a polka dot um, roof. <laughs> all the roofs are polka dot. So I pulled out a couple of fabrics that have polka dots on them and I thought in case I wanted to do that I might not do all of the roofs with polka dots but maybe. So I have this small black and white polka dot. And then I have the large polka dot. This is more of what I think she's using. So I have those. 
Plus I might be able to use like this smaller one somewhere else when I'm making the other blocks. Okay. The next, now I'm just picking out yardage. I went through over there and picked out some yardage. And these are all in the kind of soft tonal colors probably. Earth tones, I guess. Um, I found this blue, which goes pretty well with the blue in the sky. And it has little birds in it and flowers and stuff like that. So I could, I could use that. And I was looking for more blues, but I ran out of time. And then this is another one that I got yesterday, and it's um, very dark brown. Definitely goes with this quilt. That's kind of a no-brainer. And I picked out a few other browns, like this light brown. And this other light brown. This one is, definitely reads a solid. It's kind of like a suede. The pattern on here is kind of like a suede looking or leather. So I have these three browns. Now I'm not going to use all of that. You know, I'll definitely be cutting, um, you know, fat quarters or a half yard or something like that. Then I found this. Um, it's kind of a creamy yellow with little light blue designs in it. And it goes pretty well with the cream colored chickens and stuff like that up here and the little chicks. So that's a possibility there. And then I found this really fun chicken wire. Red. And that would go really well. <laughs> okay, Colleen. Thank you, Marianne. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, and so I just started grabbing stuff. Now I might not use all of this because I'm not done. I got a lot more fabric over here. So, um, but I want I want to bring over. If you have a nice large uh, stash like I do, just start pulling stuff out. I took this panel and this piece of fabric over to my um, shelves and I just started grabbing stuff, you know. And then as I'm going along and making these blocks, I will, some things, some fabrics will go away, you know, and maybe more fabric will come. So this is my bundle. I've had this for quite a while and it's all red, whites, and blues. And I've been wanting to do something with it for a while. And originally, um, when I decided to do this quilt, I, w I was going to use all of these. But now, I'm just going to kind of go through them. Uh, these are all fat quarters. I'm going to kind of go through these fat quarters and see which colors I think will go with these blocks that are already in here and the colors that are already in here. Oh really Beverly? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it's called the Hen House. And it came in uh, different colors too, like a gray and blue. I think there's a blue one. Um, Beth, uh, Beth Grove, 
licensed by Wild Apple and it's uh, Wyndham Fabrics. So that's it's pretty neat. Okay, so like you know, you could look at this and think, oh no, that that's not going to work. But it it might because it's got the red. It's the same tone of blue as the sky, you know. So it's the same tone of red that's in this barn. So this could work on something, um, and that's just plain old white. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, chicken wire fabric's fun. Yep, Wyndham. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I said, right? Yep, Wind Ham. <laughs> Wyndham. Hen House. I'm not sure what year, but I think I got it last year. Anyway, there's that one. I'm going to keep the white in here because um, there might be something in this pattern that I can use white for. So I'll keep that one. Um, here's a nice dark blue navy. It goes really well with the blocks that are right here. So, and it reads like kind of like a solid right but it has a print in it so I'll keep that one in there this is the same pattern kind of a different red color but it's it's kind of a, a lighter shade of the red that's in here definitely different than the red that's in the it almost looks pink so it is on the, kind of on the pinker side so maybe might be too much pink but there are there are some pinks in this so maybe it might work I'm gonna set it aside for now okay now this one is cherries this is very farmy, right? Cherries. So why wouldn't that work? You got the dark blue, the red, the light blue. That one would work. And this would look, probably look really cute on one of the houses. Okay, here's a blue with the stars. Thank you, Dawn. Well, um, it just really helps if you um, start with your fabric. Like, if you were, let's say this was your favorite piece of fabric in the world, you really couldn't just start with this if you want a scrappy quilt. And I love scrappy quilts. And um, if you're just going to do one or two colors, then, you know... <laughs> That would work right do blue and a white or something like that so if you're going to do scrappy like i said earlier this was my inspiration so you find a piece of inspiration fabric that has at least five different colors in it this one has a lot more than five different colors you know it's got the reds the greens the blues black, brown, yellow, uh, a yellow green color. So there are lots of colors that I could pick from, okay? And as I said earlier, I might not even use this um, inspiration fabric in my project at all. But if I have this to start with, the colors that I pick to go with it should all match should all be good together okay so that's how I how I like to start off with if that makes sense okay so this this goes okay I like that all right so I'll keep that in there and then this red 
with stars. That one's okay too. This dark blue looks all right and it has stars on it too. It's a little darker. Um, so I think a lot of these in here are going to work. Those but I'll know more when I start actually cutting out. Okay, this one's a little more on the, look how bright that is, a little more on the pink side, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that one out because I want more deep reds. Um... I don't like even like the way this one feels. I don't. Hmm. Take that one out. <laughs> it's got too much uh, color in it, I guess. Okay, here's a, like a solid blue. And um, I'm not really crazy about that in there, so I'm going to take that one out. Now I do like this. I'm not crazy about solids. I like things that have patterns in them. So I like that. Um, this one has pinks in it. So even though I might keep that in there. Even though it's kind of light pink, it's got the dark red too. And it goes really good with this red here. So I might keep that. Hi Tiffany. Um, here's another one. That one goes well. And this blue. Blue with red. This one, that really matches that red in that barn really well. I like that. Um, this one with flowers. Um, I don't, I'm not really filling it with this one. Um, a lot of it is the pattern. Um, and some of it is the color, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that one out. I'm not gonna use that. That's pretty. This one's a possibility. I'll keep it. Hmm. I don't know. This one's a maybe. I'm going to set it over here. Here's another one. Looks like that. No, I'm not going to use those two. I'm not really filling it with the other things I have there. That one, I'm going to keep out. I don't want that one. Here's another white. It's a white on white. Um, I'll keep that one. I don't know if I'm going to need white, but I'll keep it. <laughs> Here's a polka dot. No. No polka dot there. Say no on that one. And then here's this one. Now I do like this one. I think it's because the the design of the flowers. It stays more in the kind of the design that's already in this barn. 
um, the blocks that are in this barn. So I think I'll keep that one. And this dark blue is a no <laughs> because it's solid. <laughs> um, all the blocks that are in the Be My Neighbor uh, pattern. So I did. I haven't even really read, uh, what materials I need yet. So I, if I have too many here, I can always take them out. Okay, then I need some greens, and my stash of greens wasn't too good. I'm going to read some comments first before I move on to greens. <laughs> so, um, Crystal, you can um, go look at the blocks that I'm talking about um, on Pat Sloan's YouTube. There's a link there. And I'll post a link later <laughs> to that. I was going to do that earlier and I forgot. You, you might also be able to find um, Be My Neighbor on the Moda website. Terry says, you have lots of choices, which throws me for a loop, even when hoping, hopping, hoping for clothes. Give me three choices only? No, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. How are you today? Hi, Patty G. Hi, Vicki. Um, so I'm not necessarily going to use all of these in that project. Keep that in mind. I just want to um, find fabrics, start out with, that I feel go well with this panel. Okay? Um, then I'll start taking things out. You know, if I don't need it, I'll start removing things. Um, all right, let's move to the yellows. All right, I so I've had this little bundle for quite a while. Um, <laughs> I was going to get rid of it at one time because it's not really my cup of tea. But, it has a lot of these uh, green colors, and I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but this green is kind of like a yellow green, um, and there is some darker green in the trail there, you know, in the road. There's a road right here, it's got brown and greens, um, and so really over in my stash these were about the closest that i came to with greens um, this green is kind of the same green that's right in here so i, I need greens for the trees right um, th this isn't even cotton it's um, linen but there's no reason you can't use it in your quilt and this definitely goes, I mean, that really goes well with the this color here. So I could use those two. So it looks like I'm going to be able to use this bundle <laughs> that I thought I never would be able to. Here's another one. And that goes okay. These will all look really good in the tree block. Another green. So, 
these are all great possibilities for my pine trees and then here's a, a yellow with white and um, it's it's kind of on the green side this yellow is yellowy green so that would be good then I have this orange now I'm not going to use orange I could because a lot of the chickens in here have this color orange in it but <laughs> um, I think that would just be really stark and I can't think of anything offhand I could use this orange in in this quilt so I think I'm going to skip with the orange now if you like orange keep the orange um, I'm not going to use this one either so I'll just get rid of that here's a possibility uh, no I don't really like that one and that has orange in it I don't want that one either and then that's orange so there's a few so I got five out of that bundle that I could use in this quilt possibly now what I could do now is take these over to my uh, fabric and see if I can find another green because I would like a couple of more greens so my trees are different a little more different you know so I could do that okay so I like those and I'm gonna just take that one out <laughs> okay Let's see were there any questions for me Tiffany says I can't wait to see it together I'm not sure she's talking about this quilt or <laughs> somebody else's because I'm way behind in the chat hi Wendy Mom and Pop site did the blocks before. I'm not sure if you're talking what you guys are talking about, so. Yep, Tiffany won the grand prize for her quilt. So that is awesome. She won a embroidery machine. So at this point, um, uh, Brenda asked, what day Pat showed that sew along? Um, I think she's doing it once a month. And I think, oh boy, I'll have to look it up, Brenda. But I just went to any of her videos, and she has it in there. Let's see. The one that's on there today that's coming up as a premiere on Monday is the one I went to. And then I just clicked on the link to her website. Okay, thanks, Kay. Uh, Kay just linked the YouTube video. You can't wait to see where the cherry fabric ends up on the quilt. <laughs> I know, me too. 
I don't think I'm going to need this white um, because I'm probably going to use some white for the background. But you know, this would be a really good opportunity to use all my uh, white scraps. I think that's what I'll do. Hi, Marie. Am I still working on my Dresden plate quilt? Yep. <laughs> I work on lots of projects at the same time. Um, now I might pull out these three. Hmm. I think I kind of need a darker, this is kind of like a rust red. Well, it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure where in the quilt these will go. I think I'll just leave them in here for now. I can always take them out later. And I don't have another project for these, so... Thumbs up, everyone. Hi, Ella. Yes, it is free. The pattern is free, yep. You can get it um, from Pat Sloan's website or um, Moda still might have it too because it was a free pattern from Moda and um, Pat started it a couple of years ago and then she um, broke both her wrists and so she quit doing the quilt and now she's doing it again. Right, Terry. Um, exactly. That's exactly why I'm going to leave these until I know what the blocks look like and then I can, you know, pull out what I think will go good. So. I have a lot of choices here, definitely, probably more than I normally go, but if you go and look at that pattern, you're going to see that there are a lot of different houses, a lot, a lot of different barns and all kinds of stuff in it, um, and so that's why I want to have a lot to choose from, and that's also why I thought it would be a good uh, project to use up your scraps. Hi, Anne. Yeah, I would. I just um, when I have leftover squares from a layer cake or charm packs, I put them in with my scraps, and um, and then that way I excuse me <laughs> to sit on this chair right. Um, if I happen to need another fat or um, layer cake piece or whatever, I know where they are. Thank you, Ella. Okay, Kim. Um, let's see. Right, the blocks are all numbered. And so you just click on that, and then um, like block one, two, three, all the way to 12, 16, whatever it is. It depends on how big you want to make your quilt. If you want to just do a little uh, wall hanging, then you're maybe only just going to do a couple of blocks. And then you're not going to do all this. But you know me, when I make a quilt, <laughs> it's like go big or go home. And so I always end up making it bigger, which it definitely will be bigger because I'm going to use this panel too. So that's the whole, uh, my whole idea is to use this panel and, um, and because the Be My Neighbor is barns and houses and all that, I thought this panel would go well. Okay, so, and that, I know I repeat a little bit, but that was kind of for the benefit of anybody that's new coming in wondering what I'm doing.
All right. So then the next thing I'll do is I will bring that, the first block up, and then decide which fabrics I want to use in that. And then I can iron those. So I got lots of fabric <laughs> to choose from. I could have just stopped right here and just only use these. I don't feel like those are enough. And I might not even end up using this brown. Or if I do use the brown, it might just be for um, sashing around some of these other blocks. Or I might use the um, chicken wire fabric to go around the blocks. So that's my idea on the browns, why I picked these browns was to go around these blocks to make those bigger so they'll fit in the quilt. And then the black ones I might all these different blacks use in the roof instead of just the polka dots. So it'll be a lot more scrappy. So this is the panel that I want to try and squeeze in on the Be My Neighbor pattern. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, Linda, thanks for stopping in. Okay, there was one more I wanted to show you, if you guys still want to see. Um, set these aside. Uh, so do you cut those outer squares and make those into blocks? Yes. Um, nope, I don't leave them all together. I cut. I will cut that panel up and they will become a block that I will add in to that pattern. Okay, now I might not put all of these in there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they will be arranged in there. You know, I could like cut this out and have this whole this whole thing as a a block that goes in to that pattern or maybe I will cut out each one and then I'll use that brown or a different color to add on if I need to, if I need to make it bigger. So that's going to have to be something I determine once I get some of the blocks made. Um, then I will know what size these will need to be. Um, you know, whether I can just cut them out and then add them or if, I can, if I'm going to need to add sashing and all that. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, and maybe I won't want to, plus I'll need to figure out where this big one goes in the pattern too. Okay. So I'm not going to adjust any of the blocks that are in the pattern uh, be my neighbor. I'm going to make those just like the instructions say. So the only thing I'm going to have to uh, adjust will be this because it'll be a lot easier to adjust this to make it bigger or smaller than it would be um, the pattern that is already written. Yes, they are. The curly-haired cows are Scottish. And I love those cows. 
they're so cute. And I love chickens and horses. And I think this is a Scottish sheep. So maybe this is a Scottish panel. All it says is Down on the Farm by Lisa Sparkling for Henry Glass and Company. It has really cute sashing. I might even use that in this quilt. Wouldn't that be cute? Look at those little tractors. That would be really cute. Use it somewhere in the in the uh, pattern. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but it is on my um, wish list to do. Nancy, um, she asks, have I ever done an attic window pattern with a panel? I do want to do one. I know those tractors are so cute. I'm not cutting those off and throwing them away. Those got to go in the quilt. Um, Dexter cattle. Hmm. Is that the name? Hi, Kathy. And Patty says she would use those tractors. You're afraid to cut a panel up like that? Why? That's what they're for. They're not... Well, I guess you could leave it all this way and then add around it, but that's a pain. Um, Maybe you could put, use the tractors on the label. That's a good idea, too. I like that idea. Now, I could end up not even using this panel. But what I did use it for was to coordinate fabrics. So that's my point here. Pick a piece of fabric that has a lot of different colors in it and use this for your inspiration to pick out other fat quarters or yardage or whatever um, so you're kind of um, pulling on the designers choice of colors what colors go together how they flow together um, and then you think about the design the feeling of the design you know what it reminds you of I said this reminded me of a lot of Ameri like Americana type thing and so I started thinking about well what kind of fabric do I have that um, you know would go with with this now I could totally decide not even to use it but I have all my coordinated fabrics already that are are um, supporting fabrics that are possibly some of them can read solid but aren't they have a little bit of a pattern in them yeah it's, that's so that's how I pick out fabric sometimes even when I'm in the fabric store and um, I kind of have a pattern in mind. I will pick out a piece of fabric that I like all the colors that are in it. And then I will go along and pick out fabrics that go with it, that are low volume. Um, not necessarily in the same fabric uh, designer, you know, who designed it. I'll go around the whole quilt store looking for different fabrics that I like that I feel go with the, the piece of fabric. Okay, let's see.
Hi, Angela. How are you doing today? I think it'd be really cute with some of that panel in there, too. Thank you, Mary. Okay, so the next one I wanted to show you last Sunday, um, we talked about the, all right. Remember last Sunday or whenever it was, maybe it was a Monday, I don't know. Whenever I did the Sew Sampler Live, and um, this that I wanted to do, Day Dreams Quilt Pattern. Um, and it came with the Cory Yoder fabric. You guys remember that? Okay, so um, I talked about maybe doing a different kind of background instead of just white going out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but I didn't have anything in my stash that I thought went, you know, very well with it. And I'm not going to town anytime too soon, and I don't plan on buying any more right now. So. Hi, Karina. Yes, I starched my fabric prior to cutting. Um, any fat quarters or yardage, background fabric, any of that, I starch first. Um, if I'm using pre-cuts like a charm pack or jelly roll or layer cakes, any of those, um, if I'm going to be cutting those down smaller for the pattern, uh, like say I only need a, uh, 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 <laughs> let me start again. Let's say I have a layer cake and it tells me in the pattern that I only need nine inches square instead of 10, then I will starch the fabric because I'm gonna be cutting it anyway. But if I need the full 10 inches, then I don't starch it. I do iron it, but I iron it with a dry iron um, just to make sure all the wrinkles are out. Brenda says, yes, I remember. Yep, we do what uh, with what we have. And thank you so much for uh, joining us. Um, so just to comment on kind of Kim's comment here, when I go to start cutting up that panel, um, you will notice that those blocks are not square. So I will, um, use spray water and readjust those. So I'll put them on my big ironing board spray it down, pin it so that it I get it square. I will pull and push on the fabric until I get that square squared up, pin it all down and let it dry like that. Um, and then after it dries, take the pins out, starch it lightly and iron it and just kind of, you know, try to get that squared up again. I notice that a lot of panels are like that. Um, the little squares and what have you that they put in there are not squared up. The fabric is all wonky. Um, yeah, I was feeling pretty good earlier today, but I'm starting to 
wear out. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Yeah, you can use your panels for fussy cutting. That's a great idea. Hi, hi Katrina. You're never late when it's alive. Hello, 1914. Good to see you, too. Oh, they are. Well, that's that's not good, Kim. Okay, so let me finish talking about that. This. Um, so what I did is I went through the pattern, and I can't share the pattern with you. Um, it's not my pattern, but if you get so a sampler, then you have this pattern too. Uh, I went and looked at the fabric requirements, um, and I'm going to need, you know, pretty close to three yards for the backing. And I found this. Now, I know it looks white, <laughs> but it's white and pink, okay? It's like a, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Um, pink, pink. It's kind of like a metallic pink almost. Can you see the pattern over here? I'll try to hold it still. Anyway, it definitely goes really well with all these colors especially the pink one okay so that will I think that's close enough and it is five yards so that it will be plenty um, I actually got this on so yeah and it looks so different when they were holding it up I thought it was going to be something different and so when I got it and I was like did I order that <laughs> okay and then I needed some other grays or even light browns so I picked these two out and they go very well with the pink and the other gray that's in there I think it'll look good um, here's the other pink here. So I think it'll go, these grays will look good. And definitely they look really good on these, on the pink. So, I think gray and pink look really good together, actually. Well, and Corey Yoder thinks so too, see? <laughs> gray and pink. So, that is what I'm going to start out with. Um, I have no clue. I do know I need all 12 of these, but I don't know how much fabric yet comes out of these for each block so I'm just going to keep making blocks until all the fabric is gone so and then I might if there's anything left if there's enough you know I can add it to the back or maybe a border or something like that so I think I got enough here to start with and I'm not sure I have to check with Becca if we're still doing this at the end of the month so I'll have to get everything cut up this week and get started so that's one of my projects so if you guys want to sew along with me on that definitely not going to get that done all in one day um, 
If Becca and I are still going to do it together, then uh, mm, I'll let you know. <laughs> so that's the other one I have ready. Plus all the UFOs I still have <laughs> going. But I did want to show you that, what I picked out. And I do have some other uh, Cory Yoder fabric. Uh, and I noticed that designers kind of stay in the same, you know, color zone so that you can mix and mac, match their fabrics together. So if I end up needing like just enough for one more block, I can go through my stuff. And I've actually, you know, I'm not, I know I have this, this pink, this one. I'm not really a pink girl, but pink's added with something else. Like this one up here, those are pink and grays. So I'll be doing another pink and gray quilt. So I guess I am a pink girl. <laughs> I'm turning pink, you guys. Um, I think I would, if the panel ha was really saturated with color, I would wash it first. Definitely. Especially if I'm going to have white as a background or anywhere near that color. And, um, but you also put those color catchers in with your, um, quilt when the first time you wash it. Turning pink, is it horrible? <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, I, uh, a few years ago I did a quilt for my sister, and they were dark, deep red colors. Uh, well, they were supposed to be maroon. And um, I, in it, I used white as the background. And when she washed it, it did kind of bleed over a little bit. Um, but it did it evenly, so the like the water got kind of pinkish, so her background fabric kind of turned a uh, light pink. <laughs> but she didn't care, so it was okay. I knew better, but the, I used um, layer cakes, and I do not pre-wash layer cakes. No way. Um, but I should have washed that quilt before I sent it to her and used um, color catchers. Bye Marianne. Thanks for stopping in. Um, let's see. Okay, Mary, you're probably already gone. See you later. Oh, you can, Angela? You could see more of the pink when I held it further away? Okay. I know, and they can be. I, I didn't even watch last night because I don't I don't want to buy any more fabric. Oh my word, my tea is still hot. That works. <laughs> Thank you. You're you're a wonderful person for sending me that. <laughs> it was so kind of her. Oop, there goes the dog. I just heard my husband holler for her. I think he's taking him for a little walk, which is good. Okay, let's see. Anything else we want to talk about? 
<laughs> now Terry has to go get a cup of coffee. My dog's name uh, is Willa. We have two dogs. Um, one is a Border Collie mix, and her name is Willa. And she's my little buddy. And um, <laughs> I just got a message from the gal that gave me the mug warmer. She said she's glad I like it. Um, I love it. I love it even more because you sent it to me. <laughs> yes, I still have snow, Angela. Um, and then the other dog's name is Annie, and she is a chocolate lab. I, um, I would say your name on here, but I didn't get permission from you to say who gave it to me. So... But I do appreciate it. Good night, Polly. Are you, Paul? Have a good night. This old lady needs a nap. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I saw your message. Anyway, I really do like it, and it was super nice of her. I had I had one for a long time. It was a white one, mug warmer, and um, in fact, I, you can use it to put your candles on too. You know, <laughs> works really good for that. Um, but my husband broke it, and I had it for years at the office and everything. Would I wash my quilt top before I quilt it? No. Um, well, Terry, you can. Um, but I would put it in like a, a pillowcase, um, the quilt top, because you have all those seams and threads. Um, and I would do it on gentle. But I wouldn't really do it. But you can do it. But if you're going to do it, I would put it in a bag of some sort. The backing, you wouldn't have to put in a bag. Um, but I will tell you that a lot of the thread seams will it'll be very thready so then you're going to have to press it um, both sides the top and the back you'll have to repress it and then you're going to have to clip all those threads off um, so and then quilt it does that answer your question i mean you can do it if you know, it's easier probably to wash it that way than to put the whole quilt after it's quilted and everything into the washing machine. But I have a big, big tub. Kind of holds it like a queen. Anyway, I would just be really careful doing that. Yeah, I'd get one, Brenda. I can't wait to see Tiffany use that embroidery machine. That'll be interesting. The ice cream truck. Kind of early in the year for an ice cream truck. That's right, dang men can't have anything nice. Wendy said that she thinks it would be a disaster. I, I kind of have to agree with, and you definitely don't want to wash the batting. <laughs> don't do that.
it's definitely I think it's a bad idea yeah just because of all the threads coming loose I haven't heard an ice cream truck since I moved away from Boise Idaho <laughs> I don't wash my backs first and here's my thought on it um, your batting and your top are all going to shrink so if they're going to be shrinking anyway you might as well leave the back so everything can shrink together <laughs> you know uh, that's why I don't wash the back now I have if it's a really dark color let's say you're using a really dark navy blue or, or a really dark red like the colors you use in a quilt of valor um, then I would pre-wash those because those are so saturated with the color um, you know it might leak out to the top that'd be the only time I would do it and that's one reason why I starch my fabric and I starch pretty heavily uh, so it gets a lot of sh uh, shrinkage from using starch or even water and not a lot a one eighth to a quarter of an inch depending on what kind of fabric you're using and you can test it I've tested it it definitely does shrink um, so there's that and then when I um, prepare my back I iron it too and I spray it and so it shrinks up a little bit but no matter what you do your batting is still going to shrink you know you're going to have a well you have to read the instructions on your batting but you know you could have up to three inches of shrinkage just from the batting that's what makes your quilt look all you know bumpy <laughs> fluffy hi Natalie Oh, really? I had made one with batiks, ran, but soaked it in Dawn dish soap and it came out. I'll be darned. Oh, wow. $1,700 for a machine. A matching cabinet for it? Oh boy, no. Yeah, Terry, that's what I would do. Um, and throw in those fabric catchers. And if it's that dark, throw in a bunch of them. Yeah, what Wendy said. <laughs> Um, I've never heard of that, Carla. Huh. Oh, exactly, Wendy. Wendy says she starched a layer cake and it shrank to nine and a half instead of by ten. Yep. Yeah, I like to use a lot of starch before I cut. Then after I have made the blocks, I don't use any starch or steam. I just use a dry iron. Um, but that, you know, that's me. That's how I do it. Because I figure, you know, I don't need to starch it again. Oh really? I never heard of that. 
Uh, Dawn dish soap does wonders when your colors run, even after using color catchers. Huh. Yes, the Blue Dawn, I would think. Okay, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. I've never seen it. Synthaprolo? <laughs> I don't think I can get it around here. I'd have to go to Amazon or something. Um, I always do up a little card when I send a quilt to somebody about how to take care of it, you know, how to wash it, how I recommend they take care of it, but they can, you know, do whatever they want to. It's theirs now, but um, especially if I don't wash it first. Like I made one for my brother and um, my sister-in-law has the big washing machine that's a uh, front load so I figured she and that quilt was really big I mean big and I didn't think I could get it in my machine so I just sent them a note a little letter and told them you know go ahead and wash it first because he's got sensitive skin like me like what Kim's talking about um, I can't wear any clothes if I don't wash them first like new clothes and uh, quilts would be the same way. I just would break out. You starch as well as you go? Yeah, I don't. Unless I'm having a really bad problem with a block, say like when you do all your points meet in the center and you get that really big fat center <laughs> blob of fabric, I might starch that down and then hold my iron on it put a brick on there. Yeah, Dawn is amazing. Alright, you guys, I'm going to start. I really have to go to the girls' room. <laughs> FYI. So, it's either take a break or go for now. Hi, Diane. I did try um, to, to do some Zoom today, um, but I only had like 20 minutes to figure it out. I thought I had Zoom already on my uh, laptop, but turns out I didn't. So it wanted me to make a, you know, create an account, do all this and do all that. And I was going to have people on today, but... Um, I'll have to go back and figure out how to do the Zoom thing. So maybe sometime during the week we'll come on and just do a chat on a Zoom chat. Oh no, Anne says the sky just turned very dark and not because of nighttime. Uh oh, you got a storm coming? I like my fabric nice and stiff when I am sewing it, yes. <laughs> You're welcome, Colleen. Yeah, I need more meds too, but I really need the restroom. <laughs> You're welcome, Tiffany. Thanks for stopping in. Tiffany is on at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Lucy Scott, hi. <laughs> I didn't see you on here. You snuck on. <laughs> oh, 
Don says, I crack myself up listening to y'all when y'all are talking about Don. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, Melissa, I'll see you at Tiffany's. Yes, I see you're new here. I haven't seen your name before. Thank you for for coming on. Um, is it? No. She comes on at 5 o'clock now. Not 25 minutes. Right, Tiffany? It used to be 4 o'clock, but it changed. It's 5 o'clock my time. Pacific Standard Time. Which, it's almost 4, so it's an hour and 15 minutes. Bye, Marla. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Terry. 7 Eastern. Yep. Uh, 7, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I think Tiffany left too. No, it's later than 20 minutes from now. It's an hour and a half, or one hour and 15 minutes. Unless my clock is wrong. Six central time. Eight eastern, yep. 8 Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's saying 8 Eastern. So if it's 8 Eastern, it's definitely 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So, anyway, a bunch of people have already left. So that's what time. If you're interested and you want to visit with Tiffany's Quilting Life, comes on at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Funny, I can see the chat come up on the air first before it comes up on here. Do I cook often? Yeah, I cook every day. Dinner. <laughs> My job is dinner. My husband does breakfast and lunch for himself. But he does ask me if I want something. But And I always do dinner. Every day. Yeah, she doesn't change time, but we change time, and so it changes. <laughs> I don't care what you all say, it's 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time is what time Tiffany comes on for me. <laughs> you guys figure your own out. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> All right. I'm correct. All right, Susan says it's the same time zone for her. Yeah, so we have like a whole hour and 15 minutes. Do you cook, Natalie? Yeah, Terry's Eastern Time, okay. Thank you, Diane. So that'd be 8 o'clock for you, Terry. I get tired of trying to come up with things to cook. I think Sunday should be leftover day. I have stewed leftover. I might make some biscuits. Um, Kim put a biscuit recipe in the Facebook group that I want to try. Um, so, I might make that. What do we do with our extra time? Well, we get a little snack. We go use the restroom. Um, 
get our next project together if we're going to do anything or kick back, relax, whatever. <laughs> and my tea will still be warm. That's right. That's right. I actually need another cup. Alright, go ahead and go. I know. Oh, that's a good idea. I think it will be sandwich time. I have leftover stew. And then if we could make like a, you know, grilled cheese sandwich. That sounds good. I usually make, like to have pizza on Sunday, but... I don't feel like making a pizza. I like my homemade pizza the best, um, but I don't have any of the cheese, so. Oh, Natalie, that's too bad. Okay, bye, Beverly. Oh, work on a puzzle <laughs> I wasn't close enough I had something really weird happen to my eyes yesterday uh, no Friday night I mean really weird I, I'm gonna call the eye doctor tomorrow and see if I can't get in it's not doing it now but it did it Friday night when I was trying to watch Becca um, it got this weird uh, sparkly floater like thing in front of it it was like you know really long it it wasn't um, a floater because I have those it was but it was really bright like like a prism you know bright it was like in my way I could not see I put in eye drops I thought I had something in my eye but my eye didn't hurt at all. So now I'm all worried about my eyeballs. Natalie cooks every day, too. I think homemade pizzas are the best, also. Anne is hand binding a baby quilt. Now, a couple of, what was it, like three years ago, I got like a. Uh, it's called a water vescula on right in the middle of my cornea and I think it was from the uh, the snow you go outside in the snow and the you know blinds you and I had gone for a walk that day so but I had my sunglasses on Yeah, I well, I I go to the eye doctor every year, um, so thanks. Now I want a pizza. Yeah, so I'm gonna call tomorrow and see if he can get me in, cause I don't want my like detached retina or anything like that to happen. Anything to do with the eyeball worries me because. I don't really want to be blind. <laughs> Terry loses peripheral vision. That's not good. Okay. So that's all that's all I had. I still have fifty six people here. They're still <laughs> I thought more people would be dropping off by now. I'm just kinda of waiting for those numbers to start going down. Anyway, it really freaked me out. It lasted for about an hour and a half. And um I started really kind of freaking out about it, but I know, I need to go. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom and I'm just drinking all this water. I'm definitely going to get my eyes checked. That's one thing I definitely do. It's, I have eye insurance and all that, so.
I've been, I've, um, first pair of glasses I got, I was like eight, I think. <laughs> yes, I make my own pizza dough. Mm -hmm. I actually um, worked for a couple of different pizza companies in my life, <laughs> in my career. I was a district manager for Figaro's Pizza which is a West Coast thing. I don't know if they have them out back East. Um, you could take take the pizza home and cook it yourself or we would cook it for you. And so I'm pretty good at making pizza. Okay, Brenda, I'll catch you later. No, the computer screen doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, Natalie. Why does she need to go? Because I've got to go to the girls' room. Check my blood pressure. Oh. Alright. I will. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. Normally, normally my blood pressure is good. It's like, you know, 125 over whatever the only time it's higher is like when I first get into the doctors <laughs> always seems like it's up a little bit higher but if they make me sit there and wait for a while then everything calms back down all right I'm gonna go you guys time's up still have 53 people here. High blood pressure will cause floaters and worse. You know, I've had the little brown or black floaters in my eyes since I think the first time I probably around when I was 18, 19 that's when I first started noticing them and I went to the eye doctor and that's what he said I had floaters. But I've always had good blood pressure, so. So I will say good night. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> and I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up on your way out. And I'll see you next time. Right here, same place, same channel. Okay, Marie. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care.